Well, hello. I'm in my kitchen today because I want to talk about one of the important facets of pen maintenance, which is cleaning the pen. That's why I'm in my kitchen, because I have a sink here. I normally will clean my pens right away. You know, as soon as I get the pen used up, if I'm not going to refill it right away with the same ink, I clean it. The reason is you end up with a big collection, like I have right here, of a whole bunch of pens that you suddenly have to clean and you're going to spend forever and ever and ever cleaning. You're going to need a few jars, uh, at least one jar. I like I, These are old salsa jars. Uh, the reason I like it is because you can soak things in it. You can also do cleaning in it, uh, see if everything runs clear and so on. This is actually not supposed to be there. A little baby uh, snorkel squeezer, I don't know what they're called. The things you pick snot out of their noses with, I don't really know what it's called. Uh, these come in handy. This isn't really the best one I've ever seen, but it works. They're handy. Uh, the jars are the biggest thing, and I suggest, maybe it's obvious, but a paper towel. We'll get to all that in a minute, so. First, one other quick precaution. See this guy? He is a very important piece of equipment for cleaning because I've read I don't know how many stories of people dropping nibs or feeds down the drain and then, whoops, now what? Well, tough luck for you, buddy. I'm going to start by cleaning out a pretty easy pen. This is uh, very typical of a lot of pens you'll run into. I'm cleaning out my Lamy ABC. The thing with a Lamy ABC and a lot of fountain pens is it comes with a cartridge converter. Now the cartridge converters are very easy to clean out because you can just kind of keep turning this and run clear water and that is really the most basic type of cleaning there is. So, let me uh, fill up some water. Cold water by the way. Why cold water? Well because cold water is less likely to deform plastic or ebonite parts of your pen. Now this camera is all manual focus when I'm filming, so sorry about that. Uh, now what I always like to do is I'll unscrew everything. I'll give the cap a quick rinse with water because people sometimes forget that there's ink splashes around inside the cap. So I'll rinse that out a few times. You don't see me doing it, of course. Stick it in, draw up a nice fill of water. Now the ink I had in this was Noodler's Whaleman Sepia, Manjiro Nakahama, which is kind of a, what's a good word, interesting ink. A little bit tough to clean out. Now as you can see, emptying it out, I'm getting what looks like chocolate milk. Uh, this ink at some point is, you're going to start seeing, it doesn't pick up on the camera I've already discovered, you're going to start seeing uh, neon colors to it. But as I keep twisting and turning, you know, I'm getting a lot of nice color out of it. Now, what you can't see now is it's starting to run about clear. That's not perfect, but it's clearish. So that brings me to another thing I can do. Now, for just basic cleaning with a nice ordinary ink, that's good enough. So what I've done now is I've uh, emptied out the water. I have my, whoops, <laughs> you glad thing you didn't see that. I have my pen basically emptied out. I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to remove the converter because you get a lot of ink will collect right there and it, that's the one place I've always forgotten. You know, if you look at my converter, once again it's like chocolate milk. You know, I had it almost clear there, so what the heck? I'm just going to drip it out in the sink. By the way, if you're working with Bay State Blue, got some special precautions coming up here, but this is not Bay State Blue. Uh, I also have found, just put your thumb and finger on the end and shake it a little. Uh, that, that just seems to find a lot more ink that you might miss otherwise. So it's not perfect yet, but we're all getting bored. So I'm going to turn my attention now to this piece. Now uh, one of the things you can do with an ordinary ink, I'm going to do it with this one, is you use this baby snot snorkeler, whoops, and you can basically do a pressure wash, whoops. This is another reason to do it here instead of in the sink. But uh, if I do that a few times, you'll actually get a lot of ink out. Ink you might not ordinarily get out. Now if I don't need the pen right away, 
I'll often let it soak overnight. Uh, just to see what runs out. I don't know if we'll see anything because I actually did a pretty good job there. So we'll set him aside. We'll ink up another one so we can talk about some other facets of cleaning. Now some pens are really uh, friendly for cleaning. Like let's check out my Edison Collier. Now the last ink I had in this, I honestly don't remember what the color is. It's been a while since I used this Edison Collier. So again, I'm going to clean out the cap. Uh, no ink seems to be running out over here in the sink. So I'll set the cap aside to dry back here on the paper towel. And same thing, rinse off the nib. Oh, it looks kind of orange, doesn't it? Uh, again, I'm just twisting and so on. Now, uh, I'm going to do the rest later. What I wanted to point out is with uh, some pens, and this is one of them, the nib unit can be removed. The Edison Collier, it just screws out. That's easy. Then, you know, if I really want to, I can take the nib assembly apart and really clean it. But what I like to do is just dump the water. Uh, if you really need to save water, maybe you can water some outdoor plants. I don't recommend watering indoor plants with this water. But then I'll just let it soak overnight. This is a piece also that may need, the grip may need to get soaked depending on the pen. So we'll just throw it in there, what the heck. So I'll let that sit overnight. Again, tomorrow it should be just fine, unless I've been letting the pen really cake up. Now, uh, set him aside. I want to show you one of, another option that's out there. Some pens really completely will come apart. I have uh, a perfect example here. This is a Noodler's Conrad. Uh, but a lot of pens, like the Noodler's Conrad, have a friction fit nib and feed, and you can just go zoop, pull them out. And then I'll rinse it off, and I'll let it soak overnight and whatnot. Now the ex exposure's a little bit off, but I just wanted you to see right here, down around the feed, that it already has some orange ink pooling around it. Sometimes you'll have this pen running totally clear, and then all of a sudden you, you soak it, you find there's a bunch more ink in that nib and feed. Uh, so now I recommend soaking if you're going to change colors or if you're going to store the pen for a while. If you're just going to ink it up with the same ink, just rinse it out, you know, like I showed you with the converter. Don't do all this extra work because, you know, what a waste of time. Now what I could do is just turn the water on just slightly. You know, you need a very narrow stream and you need a wide enough pen that can do this. Just put it underneath, fill it up with, ink, with water, shake it out in the sink, fill it up with water, shake it out in the sink, and just keep doing that till the pen, till the water starts to come out clear, which it is now doing. Then, same as we did with the converter, shake, make sure you're getting all the ink. Uh, yeah, I got a little more orange that time. And once it's coming clear, you can set the parts aside to dry. Now if that's not good enough for you, the other thing you can do with a Noodler's pen is completely disassemble it. Before I switch any settings here, I just want to mention that with the, eight, the Pilot Custom 823, one of my favorite pens, pulling out the nib and feed is an easy way to really truly clean out inside because that, that's a pen that's very hard to clean perfectly. And I'm kind of scared to totally disassemble it the way I'm about to do with this Noodler's pen. I actually just realized I have all my jars full, so since I really don't... Boy, I <laughs> uh, should have had more jars. Well, here we go. I have an extra jar here. It's not a really good jar for this, but it'll work. This is also a salsa jar. There we go. Salt, new salsa jar, because I need one. With my this Noodler's pen, I'm going to totally disassemble it. Now again, I'll rinse the cap. Just pretend I'm rinsing it over here. I will remove the blind cap. And not all pens can do this. Some pens, like the Twisbees, you're going to have to use a, a wrench and stuff to take it apart. But the Noodler's is swell. It's just really easy. Remove the friction fit nib and feed. I'll uh, drop them in. Then I will unscrew 
the feed, or sorry, not the feed, the piston mechanism. Pull that out. Whoops, it looks like this wasn't as empty as I thought it was. <laughs> That's awkward. Okay, we'll just dunk it in. And then I actually have a clean barrel here. Sorry, I have a clean barrel here. And I can just run water through it till it's totally perfect. So now I don't recommend that every time. This is you know, when you want it really perfectly clean. Now just a couple precautions with that. Some pens, like this Lanx CV following whatever it is, when I tried to pull out the nib and feed, it didn't, add, oops, sorry, you can't see that. When I tried to pull out the nib and feed, it actually did not not come out. It must not be friction fit. Not all pens are friction fit. Instead, I ended up bending fins. Now, luckily, it's a cheap piece of crap pen, pardon my French, so I don't care, but that is something to keep in mind. Uh, some pens like this is a Pelican M200, which I really need to clean out. This guy, the nib actually screws in, and one of the annoying things I find with this pen, I hope you can see it, but there's a, an inner cap in here, and for some reason, ink kind of likes to collect around that inner cap, and because it's a demonstrator, you see it. And that's a bugger to clean out. This is a cap I usually end up having to soak. Uh, some pens, like this guy, Twisby, to totally disassemble them, you need tools. Uh, you may void your warranty on some brands. I don't really care about the twist because the barrel's cracked anyway, but uh, I'll just point out this is a Bay State Blue pen. If I want to clean out uh, a unique ink like Bay State Blue, I need to be really careful. Like I'm just, I'm going to do everything with newspaper under it. I'm going to clean with, you know, just super careful because, you know, this orange will clean up, no problem. Bay State Blue, I'm going to have a blue counter. And somebody will think I've been slaughtering Smurfs in here. So what I'll do with the Bay State Blue is I'll put newspaper under it and such. And then that pen, if I want to thoroughly clean it and totally de Bay State Blue it, I'm going to also soak it and rinse it and run bleach through it several times. Uh, and even then, I may not totally trust it. Because Bay State Blue will react with just about anything. So that's kind of a bugger. And some pens, like the Lamy 2000, do come apart, you can actually totally disassemble it. You'll see videos on it. But then when you put it back together, you have to make everything make sure everything is perfectly lined up. Uh, now it is pretty visible on this pen when you take it apart where everything lines up. Some pens, like this guy, it's really subtle. This is a Monteverde Regatta Sport. It's, it's a hole designed to fit the feed. But it's really subtle. You just have to look carefully to see how the, how it matches up. And if you're not careful, you end up breaking things or bending things. And then it's, oh, that's no good. So, uh, you know, have some precautions. Now, I have also filmed a video le recently about the Jet Pens Chibi. This is another guy. I was going to clean him out, but I'm not going to do it today. Uh, this guy has a cartridge. I've been refilling the cartridges with other types of ink. Well then, you need an ink syringe, or one of these guys, an eyedropper, somehow so you can squirt ink into the cartridge and really clean it out. And by the way, those are friction fit, which is pretty nice. Now, I mentioned the paper towel. None of my pens are really ready, but we'll just pretend. So here in the background, <clears throat> this is a miserable thing to do. Holy buckets, is this annoying. Okay, back here on the paper towel, I've been laying my parts. But the reason I actually have the paper towel, other than it makes a nice place to store stuff, is when I'm done soaking a pen part, like, honestly, I don't see anything coming out of this Edison. So we'll soak him. We'll do it with him. You have a lot of water left. What I like to do is I'll lean the piece up against this, what is it, a back, I don't know what that part of the kitchen's called, but that thingy at the back of the counter, nib down, and I'll just let the ink soak into the paper towel, or not the ink, the, the water. Now, if it comes out clear, which it, ideally it should, 
then I know I've totally cleaned the pen. If it comes out with some color in it, I know I need to do some more cleaning. Uh, with the feeds and nibs, you know, I have some just plain nibs I need to wash here. With the feeds and nibs and such, I may end up, you know, I'll just lay them on their side there and clean them. Uh, let them dry after I clean them. You know, the, the point is, try and get everything dry. You don't want to store your fountain pens wet. So, I hope I've given you a few ideas about cleaning out your pen. A lot of pens you can remove the nib and feed, some you can't. Never try and force anything. Some pens can be totally disassembled, some cannot. Uh, I would do a little research on your specific pen to find out if it's cleanable by taking it apart or not. But anyway, uh, finally, you might have noticed I didn't mention pen flush. It is pot. There are pen flushes out there. Uh, my feeling on pen flushes, I've used them for certain pens. They make it may come in handy. Like if I just can't see all the gook and filth inside of the pen, I might use a pen flush. But I get nervous. Now you can buy pen flushes from Goulet Pens. Uh, I have never bought a pen flush. What I will do is I'll fill one of these up mostly with water. And then I'll put a little bit of ammonia in it. I've always read no more than 10% household ammonia. I don't use dish soap, but some people will also put a drop of dish soap in. And then I can run pen flush there. And what it supposedly it does is it breaks up those clots of ink you can't find. Uh, some people also like to get into using an ultrasonic cleaner. To me, way too much work and expense. I want to leave you with one last precaution. We'll just talk to my hand for a while. And that's this. If you do your cleaning, make sure you do it in a salsa jar as I did, on a counter or over newspaper. Do it somewhere where you can't drop the parts real far. You know, they'll, they'll hit the floor and they'll break or they'll bend and whatnot. Don't do it over the sink unless you have to. And if you do use the sink, make sure you have one of these in because you really don't want to lose parts down the drain because then you have to take the thing apart and that sometimes they don't go back together properly. So uh, I hope that was useful, and I'd like to do some more videos on fountain pen basics. Maybe we'll do one on filling and so on. So until then, we'll talk to you later.